Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Rispa Wanjanjagi. Welcome to LAPIC Leaders Africa. Tonight, we are so glad to be hosting each and every one of you that is present here. I work at LAPIC Leaders Africa as a growth associate. And besides being a growth associate at LAPIC Leaders Africa, I am also an alumni of the program and current student of the LAPIC Leaders Africa Crossroads program. Tonight, we are going to focus on the topic for discussion, which is why is investment in personal development more important now than ever before? And before, you know, into that discussion, I would like to do, uh, you know, a check-in at least with every one of us that is here so that we get to, so that we can get to see who's here, what are they doing, and yeah, so that basically we can then move on from there. So I'm so glad to see that we have been joined by people from different spaces. Um, allow me to read a few of the names I can see on my screen. Thank you so much, Franklin Vital. I can see that you're here. Thank you so much, Inez. Thank you so much, Annette Hongo. Thank you so much, Patricia Njohi. Thank you, Nyevu Karisa. We are so glad to be having you tonight. Thank you, Charles Wafula. Thank you, Frederick Alo. Thank you, Eunice Potter, Oliver Atiambo, and Ali. Once again, as I have mentioned, we are very glad to be hosting you tonight for today's webinar on why is investment in personal development more important now than it has ever been before? And with that, I would like to at least hear from a few of us that are here. So if you can hear my voice, I would like us to do one thing. Kindly text us in the chat. Mention your name and what you do. And more importantly, where are you doing this call from? Just so that we can see who's joining us from where. So I'm very curious to hear, for example, Domini, um, Dominic Oiriga, where are you doing this call from? Nyevu Karisa, I would also really like to hear. So please let us know your physical location and your name in the chat so that we know who is here with us and who is joining us. Um, and with that said, I think I would also like to hear from one person. I can see someone on the screen by the name Frank Como. So I want to start with you, Frank Como. How was your day? And what is one thing that has, you know, sort of led you to be part of this discussion tonight? Frank? All right. So as Frank comes onto his screen, I'm so glad to see Stanley. Stanley from Nairobi. Thank you so much, Stanley, for being here. We are so glad to have you at Lapid Leaders Africa. Patricia and Jockey, please let us know where you're doing this call from. And if you don't mind, you can also let us know what to do in the chat. We want to have a session that is as interactive as possible because at the end of the day, this is for us. Um, let me hear from Frederick Alo. If you can hear me kindly unmute, let us know where you are doing this call from and what you do. Fred Frederick Alo. All right, okay. So by the way, so that I do not call random names, um, you can also text me, you can please, yes, thank you. I'm so glad to keep seeing the chats. Please keep texting in the chat. We really want to see uh, who's represented here and maybe, okay. So who is represented here and where are they from? If you would like to speak also, please feel free to lift your hand using the reactions option on the Zoom app, um, as that will at least help me see who we can call to unmute and to speak to us. But the goal is I want us to have a very interactive session this evening. Allow me to read some of the chats that have come in. I see that we have Oliver Otiambo, Mr. Oliver Nyantero from Vihiga. He's a teacher and a motivational speaker. We're so glad to have you here, Mr. Oliver, and it is such an honor for us to host you from here in Nairobi to Vihiga. That's the way to go. I see that we have Patricia, Patricia from Nakuru. 
Thank you so much, Patricia, for being here. We are so glad to host you. And then I see that we have a Mr. Wekesa Wanjala, um, Dr. Wekesa Wanjala from Mombasa. Ooh, funny cool, eh? Thank you so much for being here. Please let us know how is school. Hey, Nairobi, it's just raining a lot and it's also very cold. Uh, so we'd like to hear, you know, how are other different parts of the country doing? I see Nyevu Karisa from Nairobi, Kenya. She's a technical project manager in digital health and effective um, and an effective communication coach. Wow, amazing. Thank you so much, Nyevu Karisa. We are so glad to see that you're here. And I'm so glad to also see that you're an effective communication coach. So now I feel like I need to be very you know, up to standard to make sure that, you know, as a coach, what kind of notes would you give me? But that is the point of this webinar, that besides the thoughts that we are going to share here, we also want to see what do you do? You know, you could share what you do. Like I see Oliver share that he is a teacher and a motivational speaker. As many of us continue to share what we do, it's a great way for us to know each other it's another great way also for us to get to know who's in the room who are the people that i may want to go and contact after this so it's always good like do not shy away from sharing what you do because this is the world of advertise yourself yeah nowadays it's the more the more you can share what you do the more your chances of people knowing what you do and therefore taking up your services because as the population of the world goes higher as the work population or rather as people who are fighting for opportunities in the same workplaces where we are as they increase so does our need to stand out so does our need to be as loud as we can about what we do so let me read a few more chats and then we are going to move into another part of this meeting whereby I will invite my colleague, Frank Como to come and share just very, very briefly who NAPID Leaders Africa is, what we do, where we are based, what is Crossroads, and then after that, we will move directly into the main business of the hour, which is our final discussion on why is it so important now more than ever before to invest to invest in, you know, to invest in your own personal development, especially for us who are now developing our careers, or even those of us that now want to take our careers onto the next level. So I will read a few more chats, and then my colleague Frank will come in, share a bit, who is Lapid Leaders, what is Lapid Leaders Africa, you know, just for the advantage and the benefit of those ones who do not know, and then we will go to our panel. And so with that, I see that Annette, Annette from Nairobi, thank you so much, Annette, for being here. We appreciate you. I see we have Frederick Allah. He's sharing that he's happy to join us and he's in a matter with a lot of noise. Oh, Frederick. Um, but we hope that you can hear us clearly. Then I see that we have Seth Chalo to everyone. She says she's Seth Chalo, um, Somo Africa. She's uh, not she, probably a uh, actually said hello um somo africa a product development lead that's amazing thank you so much Seth, for being here we are glad to have you this titus moreo titus um works with madison insurance he's a claims analyst we're so glad to have you here then i also see that we also have franklin Gitao from also from Somo Africa, from Mombasa. We are so glad to have you here. And then I see that we have, um, okay. Um, I think with that, keep your chat coming in. If you're just joining us, we are so, so glad to have you. Maybe I can do introductions just one last time for the benefit of those that have just joined us. My name is Rispa Wanjanjage. I am going to be your host for the evening. I work at Lapid Leaders Africa as a growth associate, as well as a, the organizer of a lot of the webinars that you will see, but that's just part of the work that I do. Besides that, I am professionally trained as an advocate, having completed both undergraduate and training at the Kenya School of Law, and 
and I'm also privileged to have been to have been um, a LAPID alumni. So I'm lucky that I have done both the flagship program as well as now where I am now taking the LAPID Leaders Africa Crossroads program. Okay, then besides that, what else? I think we are now going to make an introduction to you guys about who we are as LAPID Leaders Africa. And I invite my colleague Frank to do that first. Frank, please introduce yourself, let us know who you are, what you do, and then we can move on to your presentation. Thank you, Rispa. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, my name is Frank Komu. I'm a graphic designer and a digital marketer. I serve at Lapid Leaders Africa as the digital marketing associate. Um, today I'll be giving a brief uh, introduction of what LAPI Leaders Africa is, and I know we'll be sharing more about what we do in the course of this webinar. Um, but just to give a short introduction, LAPI Leaders Africa is uh, a non-profit organization uh, that has various programs to train and develop um, the capacity in an individual. This is done through uh, trainings by coaches and mentors to deliver experiences that change mindsets and build self-awareness as well as help cultivate exceptional character in the workplace. We have two distinct programs. Uh, we have first the LAPID experience. This is uh, designed for undergraduates and recent graduates from the university. This helps them get better prepared for the marketplace. So it acts as a bridge between university and the workplace, uh, starting off by helping participants build their self-awareness um, and then equipping them with skills that are essential for them even as they get into the marketplace. The second program is the LAPID Crossroads program. And we and on today's panel, we have quite a number of alumni from this particular program. And this program is designed for uh, professionals who have been working for at least three years. So they have more than three years of experience and it is designed to help them gain managerial skills, skills to help them lead teams and uh, skills to be problem solvers in different organizations, be it whether they're employed or whether they have their own organizations as entrepreneurs. So that's just a brief introduction into LAPID. Um, uh, happy to have you all here. I hope that you will enjoy this webinar. Uh, back to you, Rispa. Awesome. Thank you so much, Frank, for sharing that. Uh, for everyone that is join, just joining us, we're so glad to have you. Please, Ukisha Ingia, kindly introduce yourself in the chat by telling, telling us your name, what you do, and we would also really, really love to hear where are you doing this call for? Uh, I would like to read a few chats of the people that have come in. I see we have Ibrahim, Ibrahim, former... Um, CEC Health, Wajir County, now a PhD student on health systems management. That is brilliant. And I feel that that introduction by Ibrahim actually brings us to the business of the day. See, we are now living in a world where your skills can be relevant today, your training is relevant today, and then something like COVID-19 comes and happens or something like chat GPT comes and happens and it disrupts, you know, it disrupts almost everything in our workplaces, the way we do research, the way we have to, we have access to information, the way we are expected to interact with each other. We are also living in a time where there is such a global awakening in a lot of things from human rights, as we have seen with the Black Lives Matter, to within our own country that we are having a kind of I don't know, I don't want to call it, I don't want to say a spiritual awakening, but we are finding that even in our own country, besides the fact that we have found ourselves having things like demonstrations, and the value of the shilling is against the dollar is, you know, insane. Your 
invest with Basil the next day. Okay, I thank you for this feedback. Um, okay, I will work on my sound and apologies for that. Uh, okay, so I'll work on it ASAP, ASAP, ASAP. But what I was saying is that right now we are living in a world that is very dynamic. Today, what you studied is relevant. The next day, things have moved on. You find that as a professional, you started out in one way, and then technology comes in and it shifts or almost changes and threatens the way we have been doing work. You know, we are post-COVID, we're in the post-COVID era. And therefore, right now, work is not being done the same way it was. There is more concern about how do people rest? How do people um, feel taken care of and invested by the organizations that they work with, as opposed to the way we have done before, where people work and work and work. So all I'm trying to say with this is that I know that there is a lot of disruption in the way work is right now, in the way we need to think about how businesses are run. And that is why we as Lapid Leaders Africa, who are a leadership development organization, have organized this webinar so that we can hear from a few panelists of people that have been part of the Lapid Leaders Africa Crossroads program to hear from them about why is it very important that we invest in our personal development now more than ever before? Why is that important for a professional? Why is that important for a business leader? Why is it important for you, who is also a team player, you know, in part of a company that's existing or that has been there for quite some time? And with that, I would like to welcome every one of our panelists today to kindly switch on their videos so that we can now do our introductions and get onto this very important part of our discussion. I would like to introduce to you first that our panelists for today are going to be Polika Bangori, who is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, but he will give more information about the work that he does. We will also be joined by Maria Mwendo, who is also an administration guru, as well as someone who's going to share more about the work that they do. And finally, we are also joined by Annette, who's in real estate and who's also one of the youngest rulers. Sorry, there seems to be some background noise. Um, right, thank you for that. Um, as I was saying that we will also be joined by Annette Hongo right now in real estate, and she will be sharing more about what she does and what her work is. With that, I would like to start with the introduction of, you know, ladies first. So I will start with you, Maria. Please introduce yourself, what you do, and tell us, where are you doing this call from also? So I seem to be the one with the uh, background noise. However, I hope I'm audible. Yes. Yes. My name is Maria Muendo. Uh, I am an admin for a medtech company within Nairobi. I study at mathematics and computer science. I'm based in Nairobi currently. And I'm happy to be here to share what the journey looks like. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria, for that short and sweet introduction. Let me move on to the next lady in the house, Annette Hongo. How are you this evening? Kindly introduce yourself. All right, um, Annette, Hi. just let uh, Hello, everyone. My name is Annette Hongo. Okay, uh, my name is Annette Hongo and I'm in the real estate industry investment analysis and market research. So I am all rounded in the real estate sector to that extent. And um, I'm joining you from Nairobi. Awesome. Thank you so much, Annette. And we look forward to hearing more from you. And finally, our last panelist for the day, Polycap Agoy. Wakili, how are you? 
Uh, <clears throat> uh, good evening. I'm very fine. Asante sana Rispa for having me here today. Uh, as you've said, my name is Agoy Polika. I'm an advocate of Kenya. Uh, each and every day I do law, I study law, I interpret the law, and I understand the law. So that's basically what I do on each and every day. And I'm glad to be among the panel here today. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to the next of the activities here. Awesome. Thank you so much for each of your introductions. And I would like to mention to everyone that has just joined us, we are so glad to be hosting you this evening. We would like to see in the chat, why do you think that it is very important that people invest in their personal development today? We want to have this discussion with you. We want to exchange thoughts with you on this topic. And with that, I am going to ask the first question in for the evening, but I will do so by starting with a quote. So I just came across this quote and it said that any executive or any aspiring executive in the 21st century market must keep on investing in themselves. The world of technology is changing in the blink of an eye. Today, your education and skill could be relevant, and tomorrow they have been overtaken by time. Any executive that desires to stay relevant and desires to stay competitive must consciously invest in themselves. So with this, I would like to hear from our panelists. What does personal development mean to you and why do you think it is so important that we invest in ourselves today? I would like to start off with Polycap Agoy, then followed by Annette, and then finish with Maria. Polycap, let's go. Uh, <clears throat> To me, uh, personal development basically are activities that somebody undertakes in order to improve themselves, either personally, uh, to improve their character, their skills, and even in one way or another, maybe to improve their capacity to make their life better or even to make uh, their life more productive. That's how, to me, what... Uh, personal development is all about. Uh, also, maybe as you, that quote that you, you, you've highlighted, you've really captured one essential thing that is in relation to technology. Personally, I've been an advocate for the last about six years, and actually technology has drastically changed our profession as advocates. Uh, nowadays, I do law courts. I attend court here in, here in my office. I don't need to go physically there. And mm -hmm. serving documents nowadays, we serve documents through messaging applications and emails. And what that has done has led people who are paralegals, let's say they were clerks, because mm -hmm. initially you had to serve documents physically. Right now, you can just serve through email or even WhatsApp, which is a messaging application, and court considers them properly served. And now what has happened is that paralegals are not necessarily an essential tool in in, uh, in court work, maybe in land matters and maybe in other aspect of litigation. And so your court is relevant at this time. And now it's upon people to develop their skills in, and to be more innovative. And that's, why, that's how my interpretation of personal development is. And that's how I can understand it. All right. Thank you so much, Polycap. Annette, for you, same question. What does personal development mean to you? And why, why is it important that we invest in our personal development now more than ever? Okay, so... Um, I mean, next personal development is pushing beyond your limits. It's continuously, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So to me, personal development is pushing beyond your limits. It's continuously learning and searching for ways to improve yourself. 
It can be in many forms. For instance, fixed mindset or growth mindset, you can choose to gain and apply more knowledge by studying, by just learning different things about the industry you're in. And it can also be in terms of um, gaining more skills. For instance, you can gain, you can better your skills your communication skills, your interpersonal skills, your baking skills, hiking, it's anything, anything that makes you a better person or a better individual in whichever aspect, whether it's in your personal life or in your career as well. Mm, all right. Thank you so much, Annette and Maria. Over to you. What are your thoughts on that question? So I do appreciate um, the definition by Polycap as well as um, Annette's, uh, Annette's definition also. And for me to add on top of that, I think um, beyond staying relevant, beyond uh, growing, uh, beyond your career, beyond gaining knowledge, it's answering to a need within yourself. As the years go by, our needs change. Our needs change. Our individual needs change. At one point, perhaps you may start wanting the money um, just to meet your needs. Beyond that, as you grow, as the years go on, you will then grow to need something else. And above that is fulfillment. Are you answering to that need that you have inside you? Whatever you're doing, is it making you happy? How do you go about having that sense of peace in what you're doing, drive just loving what it is you're doing. So for me, it answers to personal fulfillment. Mm. Ultimately, when you work on all this, it fulfills the inner you. And that is why towards the end, even when you're 90, you will find a reason to get out of bed and follow up on something because that is just who you are. And ultimately, that is what people can say. Oh, Polycap, Polycap was all about law. Polycap, uh, um, Annette was all about research and real estate. So basically, for me, it answers to fulfillment. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much for that. And I want to sit a bit longer with the definition that Maria has given, that at the end of the day, it's about our self-fulfillment. But, you know, one of the biggest sort of realities of our times is that as we seek to fulfill our needs, as we seek to fulfill a need within us to keep growing, to keep developing, this will not be happening in a vacuum. You are surrounded by people, you are surrounded by companies, you are surrounded by family that requires or maybe needs a lot of different things from you. You will be surrounded by work demands for those who are working, or if you're a business owner, the demands could be even higher. You have to keep your employees, um, you have to keep the lights on. There's a lot that you have to do. So what that brings me to is a question to each of our panelists. I would like to hear from each of you an experience that led you to feeling like, wait, okay, I need to put in some effort in developing myself like something that arose and, you know, I just want to hear an experience you've had that prompted you to seek to get into a personal development program or whatever you have done to, you know, invest in yourself so far. And I would like to start by hearing from Annette. Um, so for me, Um, personal development is something that I can date back to maybe when I was around 10 or 14 because coming in, so coming to talk to us. So that's, so my need for personal development kind of started then, but between, between primary high school, after, after high school and university, there was this gap. And even, even before I joined, there was this gap. So once I joined the job market, I realized that I mostly, the, the need for self-development came about when I was just doing what requirements, what I had achieved according to the job market was not enough. So I needed to take it a notch higher. Because yes, I had the papers, yes, I had the knowledge, yes, I had everything that I needed, but I didn't have 
the interpersonal skills. I didn't have the communication skills. I didn't have all these other soft skills that really distinguish people from other from others. So as I was sitting down in the office one day, I just realized that yes, um, I really need to I do think something. Your sound, about. your sound is fluctuating. I'm so sorry about that. Perhaps you could. Am I still audible? Can I be heard? Okay. I think Chris yes. has temporarily left. Yeah. Me. Please continue, Annette. I but, can hear you. But that's okay. That's when I realized that I needed to develop myself even further. Yes. Thank you, Annette. Sorry, I think my sound had gotten lost for just a bit. But thank you so much for sharing your experience of what has prompted you to develop yourself. And I will be coming back to you on, okay, so what are some of the ways that you have invested in yourself? Um, but let me move on to Polycap for you. An experience that led you to feel like, hey, hold Polycap, you're good, but you probably need more. <clears throat> Uh, of course, uh, having been in the profession for quite some time, I've come to realize that uh, we have quite a number of opportunities that are around everywhere. And with the time, we realize opportunities actually are very abundant. But what is not there is the capacity to grasp opportunities that are very meaningful and that you can use them to have greater impact on how, or maybe to yourself and also to what you're doing. And mm -hmm. therefore, I, de I decided because you see, as a professional, yes, I'm passionate about justice, but you see, you mm -hmm. cannot, uh, at the same time, you need to operate in a more uh, impactful way. And also at the same time, you're doing it as a, as a business so that you can be able to, to uh, achieve your day-to-day -day activity. Of course, you need to, as an entrepreneur, the legal practice need to translate into making money. Therefore, there's that balance. What opportunities can you grasp that can meet those two? And therefore, it needs a level of personal understanding. How can you do something for you by yourself that you can be able to achieve your personal needs and also be impactful? Therefore, doing a, 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 a course in personal development development, I can be able to understand what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses, what areas can I improve, improve on so that I can personally have a personal meaningful life using my creativity and my innovation. At the same time, having a meaningful profession in what I do by offering justice to other people. So to me, it was a matter of uh, uh, having a desire to understand of how can I be more meaningful in my profession and also be mean, meaningful, meaningful in having a fulfilling life. That's what uh, uh, led me to be able to doing a personal development course. And maybe on your last question in terms of what am I doing, what, what, what am I doing is trying to take up courses in training, uh, taking exposure, network, uh, also networking. And I'm very glad that uh, I'm able to gain these things all the way uh, by doing a course in Crossroad, which is called Three, which has I've been able to meet people in different professionals. Like I've met Annette here, my colleague in the class, who is in, uh, 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 in uh, real estate. And of course, Maria, who is, uh, we already decided that she's very good in operation. And you see, this yeah. gives me new fields, uh, new ideas in different fields. So that's how I decided to do a course in personal development. And also that's how I'm doing it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Polycap. And now we are going to hear from you, Maria. You know, I would like to hear from you all experience. What led you or what has where what have been circumstances that have led you to see that there's a need to invest in yourself and in your personal development? 
So I think beyond the twenties, figuring out myself and everything, life came by and I got caught up when you get a job, you go, it's about going to the next thing. And sometimes the next thing is not so much of a leap. And then six months down the line, a year down the line, you're like, okay, this is getting monotonous, what next? This is getting monotonous, what next? And sometimes just life goes by, but, and when you sit down and take stock of your, of your life, you find you caught up in events, um, both social and professional that you have not actually defined myself. So I think first, personally, I got to that place where I was like, um, so 30 years of my life have gone by and if I look back, I, I, I'm looking, what do I have to show for this? Like that has a, my personal individual stamp on it, other than just going with emotions, other than just answering to, 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 to needs, ad addressing people's needs, interacting with people, family, and just life in general. Beyond that, what do I have to show? Is what, what will I leave as a mark? God forbid if today I left, what will people remember me for? And mm -hmm. Even in my in my role at the time, I sat down and I was like, what next? So for me, it, it began gradually with me asking, what next? How can I be intentional about it? What do I want to achieve? What do I want my boss to remember me for when I leave the company because I'm employed? And I was like, there is more impact I can put, I can bring forth and I need to empower myself to be confident enough to put for that. And if I'm interacting with a manager, if I'm interacting with somebody, even within my field or not, I need to be equipped enough to speak, to, uh, to present a professional manner. And even at a personal level, I need to know my stuff. And for that, I need to upskill. For that, I need to build myself. I need to search myself and bring myself forth. And for me, this year, actually, for me joining Crossroads, I was actually at Crossroads because it was like, what next? And how do I just begin the journey of getting there? How do I build myself up and set a good foundation for me getting there and making making sure that going forward, every day counts. It, and down the line, when I take stock of the year 2023, I should be able to see that I have really moved. I am really getting more fulfilled. It's not about just meeting and answering to the demands of my environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me, the first step was just crossroads and it came timely yeah mm. wow thank you so much that it's not just about answering to the needs of your environment i really love that and i know that a lot of us who are here we identify if you have been a professional and especially i think once we go past the age of 28 now we start hearing a lot of questions even in, within ourselves with, from the society so what are you doing nowadays? Where is your car? Where is your what? Like we can have a lot of this pressure and we can get caught up in that pressure of, oh, so I need to have this to prove to look like I am making it in life. And then I need to do this and then I need to do this. So you find yourself with a lot of this and this and this, it's never enough. And so that is why once again, we are coming back to the conversation of, Personal development, is it only to make sure that you are doing well at work alone or is it about living a more fulfilled life, a more purpose-led life? So it can be a purposeful career. It's not just about doing things and crunching numbers for those who are in the numbers space or just answering to events and doing things for the sake of it, but like how does it satisfy us ourselves? And as you have noted, if you've been here, you've had a lot of the, of you've had the panelists mention that they have been part of the Crossroads program. So what the Crossroads program is, for those who missed the introduction by my colleague, the Lapid Leaders Africa Crossroads program is our leadership development program for professionals that have at least three years of work experience. And the goal of Crossroads is to work with you and to partner with you as you advance onto the next level of your career, or even for someone who is considering a career change, you know, you feel like you're at a crossroads in your career, in your professional life, in life, you know, the crossroads of experience has been proven to be 
such a powerful tool for the people that have done the program. And we would like to encourage and invite every one of you that is present here. If you are a professional, you're aspiring to get into more, like into getting more responsibility or getting into the space of management, or you're already in management and you just need, you know, to like keep upgrading and staying competitive in your field, then we welcome you to apply to the Crossroads program by Lapid Leaders Africa. My colleague will be sharing with you an application link in the chat that you can click on and get to join our amazing community. With that, I would like to now move on to another question that I have for our panelists today. So I want us to get a bit personal, yeah? And I want to talk about self-development, rather self-awareness, and what role it can play in our own personal development. And with that, I would like to read sort of just a short message, a short quote that I, I saw somewhere about self-awareness, but Self-awareness is a very critical step to take towards developing yourself. However, in this post-COVID world where everyone or a lot of people are talking about wellness, self-awareness has almost become a buzzword. You know, a buzzword that is related to mental health, to people who want to be on online trolls or in their professional fields, you know, people who might want to um maybe be sarcastic or also people who are like advancing with each other i'm sure that every one of us here at some point you have had this a need for self-development and so what my question is is what is self-awareness really and how how is it important to someone when they need to grow themselves so and how do you tell someone who for example you know, you've been in the career for, you've been in the career for over 20 years. And then someone is telling you, maybe you need to invest further in your self-awareness so that you're able to grow. You know, it may feel like an insult to someone who's been there. So the question to me um, that I want to ask our panelists this evening, now that you have done the Crossroads program, what would you say is self-awareness really for a professional? And how can you invest in it? Okay, so what does it, what does self awareness look like for a professional, and what is the value of self awareness in personal development? I would like to start with you, Holly Kapagoy. What do you think? Uh, to me, uh, as a professional, uh, Self-awareness, self basically, it can basically mean just what it says, self-awareness, being aware about yourself as an individual. And maybe on, on this end, maybe as a professional, and basically is to having a 360 understanding of yourself, not just about what are your weaknesses, but what are your strengths? What are the areas of improvement? understanding yourself fully in totality, because uh, the effect of this is you are able to understand what are your strengths and how can you leverage on them. Let's say, are you good, good in uh, expressing yourself in a very uh, persuasive and in a more passionate way? And how can you use it uh, in your profession? And therefore you can be able to sharpen it and also capitalize in it. And also in a team, you can comfortably take up roles that a key can keep keep your team at an edge by you presenting that skills and therefore it will keep you more relevant in your work and also in your in whatever you do and also in weaknesses it can be an opportunity for you to understand what areas am i not good in who, who can i team up with in order to be able to work or to in order to to be more productive in a particular way so personally self-awareness is a matter of having a 360 understanding of your uh, of yourself Knowing on how to leverage on both your strengths and weaknesses, and also taking the opportunities that are available to improve on yourself so that you can be able to, to become a better person and make yourself more productive, more satisfied in whatever you do. And therefore, that's how my personal understanding of self-awareness uh, self and also how it can be able to be used 
uh, as a professional in what somebody does. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for what you have shared. And I love that as you gave your answer, you also touched on that sometimes self-awareness, um, it's not limited to what our weaknesses are alone. I love that because a lot of us tend to focus on, oh, self-awareness means what are my weaknesses? No, you can operate in your genius, but I don't want to give the answers today. Annette, what do you think? Just as, uh, as Polycarp has said, self, for you to be self-aware, you need to really understand your strengths and you need to work towards bettering them. Um, this, the, the, but the strengths can be known to you and there are other, the other strengths that you may not know of that, that other people may know of as well. So if you seek, so self-awareness is, is not just about knowing what, it's not just about knowing what you are, but you should, also, you should also seek to know what other people think about you as well. So for instance, somebody may pick, may see, oh, RISPA is wonderful at hosting events, but maybe RISPA never knew that she was good at hosting events before. And so with self-awareness, with the all-rounded self-awareness, which includes both internal and external points of view, you get to really understand yourself. You get to really grow. You get to really change your attitude towards different things. You get to keep pushing on, yeah. Mm, awesome. Thank you so much. And I love the way you're talking about both internal and external self-awareness. This is from the feedback that we receive from people, from our teams, um, you know, from the people that we work with, whether they are working below us on the same level or they are the people that we report to. There's a lot that self-awareness can do for a professional, especially if we are intentional about it. Maybe Maria, I would like to hear from you. Um, what is self-awareness for a professional like you? Like how, how have you found it as being valuable to know yourself? But I will not try to answer that question. What is um, on top of what Polycap and Annette have said, I'll bring in another element. We are a product of our experiences. Um, both social and professional. Currently, we, 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 what we have interacted with has shaped us to what we are right now. And most of the times, there is a clash within us and we tend to find ourselves in situation, especially when we get exposed to situations that are new to us, sometimes we can get lost or get defensive or fight off. So part of the other element of being aware of yourself is that when you when you know what you can I say value what you believe in you are able to see your biases you're able to be conscious of your biases conscious of your strengths and your weaknesses and conscious of both the external and, and, and internal external factors, as, as Annette said, you're able to respond better when you're put in situations that you have never experienced before. And that means that that will equals growth. And that will not, um, that gives you the confidence to step forward and take on something. Because most of the time, we fear. And being self-aware, for me, to some extent will allay some of this fear and give you the hope that, oh, I can do this. I know this about myself. I can try this. I can try this. So it kind of gives you the push and the energy to mm. go there and be great and take the mm. opportunities that Polycaps keeps mentioning. There are opportunities, but most of the times we tend to shy away because we are scared. We don't know our potentials, but self-awareness gives us that starting energy, if I can say, the energy to take the first step towards that journey. Mm. Wow, thank you so much. And for everyone that is joining us here, thank you so much. What we are talking about this evening is why is personal development and investment in our own personal development important now more than ever before? 
and we are looking at various aspects of what personal development is. It's from your own self-awareness. It's from how you understand the need for your own personal development. It's how you are, it's how aware you are of your environment to deal with all the changes that are happening in the world right now, in technology, in growth, in human culture, in people culture. And so if you have any questions to our panelists, we would really love to hear them from you. And now I would like to still go back a bit on that conversation of self-awareness. Maria, I love the way you have also highlighted, you know, in addition to what Polycap and Annette have said that self-awareness also speaks to our biases. It speaks to our fears. It can speak to the things that as a professional can scare you, for example, you know, point for someone to be the head of marketing, they had to have studied, I don't know for how long. And then nowadays the kid who comes into the blog and they can do all the social media marketing, all of a sudden they're in the same level as you, like how do we deal with that threat? So maybe what I would like to come back Uh, I think, uh, Maria, you can continue answering the question <laughs> as it had been asked. Uh, uh, wait, Paul, me, I don't know what I have done to KPLC today. <laughs> they just, they, but they will not mess with our lives. Um, sorry that I dropped off briefly. What I was saying is that you have each gone through one-on-one -on -one executive coaching sessions with the lead facilitator at Crossroads um, in Lapid Leaders Africa, that is Esther Moniki. What would you say, how would you say those one-on-one -on -one sessions have been important to you as an individual? I would like to start with you, Annette. Thank you, Ms. Pa. Um, the one-on-one -on -one sessions are quite important. They are quite intense. And I love that about them. I love that Esther really asks you questions that just get you out of your comfort zone. She she interacts with, so Esther is the CEO of Lapid Leaders Africa, for those who don't know, uh, the founder. So she just, when you, when you have the executive coaching sessions with her, you just get to learn so much more about yourself. For instance, um, I was, Esther suggested that I should delve into writing and I used to write before, but just mostly for journaling purposes, just to keep a record of what was happening in my day-to-day -day life. But I never really thought of writing, like publishing reports or publishing blogs here and there. So I actually did think of it, but the main thing, I, I was afraid of posting them. I was afraid of what people would think. I was afraid of, you know, the unknown. I was just, I was just wondering what will happen. Will people read my my content? Will people interact with it? Will they like it? Will they not like it? But through the executive coaching sessions, uh, Esther pushed me out of my comfort zone. She told me to write a blog. I wrote a blog, posted it on LinkedIn, and I got interaction the people interacted with my post but during the class I remember this one during a, a, one of the classes you had during the crossroads program she mentioned that you know it's not about the number of people you reach out to but it's the growth that you're making so yes maybe my LinkedIn post only got 200 impressions but I have moved out of you know the place of fear the place of just not doing what I want to do and I've moved to the place where I'm actually stepping out, where I'm actually putting in the effort, where I'm actually publishing my content as well. And yeah, I believe I'm not yet where I want to be. And I say not yet where I want to be. I'm going to get better and better through these executive executive coaching sessions. And I, I urge all of you in this meeting to just join the Crossroads program because it is amazing. The transformation that has occurred in my life in the past three months is impeccable. Wow, you know what? 
I will literally just go straight to Maria. Your experience with the one-on-one -on -one coaching. I will borrow Annette's word. It is intense, especially when um, you get to that vulnerable spot where you give somebody access to kinder. You know, most of the time we tend to protect ourselves, but when you open yourself that way and are ready to take the feedback, it will be very intense. Um, for me, it was intense because I had to address perhaps elements of me that I blocked off for one reason or another. As I, as I said before, that we are who we are because of our experiences, because of our interactions, and we have our own biases that make us make the decisions or respond to anything the way we do today. And for me, it has been a journey back to my life to kind of find myself, the better version of me where I buried that person and bring her forth. So yes, it is intense. It's about, first for me, it's about finding myself because I cannot give people when I don't know exactly who I want to give to people. And that includes finding myself so that I can step out socially, step out um, professionally and be meet or bring forth the 100% of Maria that Maria is able to give. Yes, so mm. wow. that's it wow. for me. Thank you so much, Maria. And you know, for someone who is here, I hope we're not using very internal looking language. What I mean by one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions it's that you literally sit with an executive coach that those are some of the perks of the crossroads program but you will sit with an executive coach to go through your life and to plan for at least the next five to seven years of your life how is it going to look like what is your career life going to look like so that as you strategize so that you can strategize instead of just existing, you're able to see, okay, in the next five years, this is where I want to be. So what steps do you need to take to achieve that? That is what the Crossroads one-on-one -on -one executive coaching sessions with our lead facilitator, Esther Moniki, are about. And I would like to close this um, sort of discussion on the one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with Polly Kapagoy. What was your experience and what is one or two benefits you have reaped from the one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions that you are applying right now? Uh, <clears throat> so I did my one-on-one -on -one session with an uh, executive coach that was Esther. And actually it was one of the greatest highlights during my course. Uh, the good thing about the one-on-one -on -one session is whereby you sit with a coach, you tell him what you do as a person individually and also as a professional. And she's able to analyze both of them and be able to match them just as a coach does. The way a coach tells a footballer, you need to hit the ball using this style. When you're at a corner, look, do this, pass the ball this way. Now he does it at a personal level. You as Polycap, uh, to me it was, uh, Polycap, what do you do? How, how long have you been running the law firm? How do you assess your growth as a law firm? Uh, what uh, mechanism are you putting in place to make it more sustainable? How do you meet your clients? How do you interact with your staff? These are questions that on a day-to-day -day basis, you rarely answer. But when you answer them to her, she's able to look at them. She's a career, she's, she's had a very a productive career as a coach. Therefore, she's very skilled. She's been in the corporate. She's met people in different areas. And I was very lucky and glad that currently she's developing an interest uh, in the legal profession. And actually she indicated that very soon there shall be a specific training specifically for lawyers like me, because she's, she's, she's keen with the profession. She sees there's so many opportunities in this area. And so to me, my highlight is, was in relations to having, being very more productive in my law firm. Because you see, uh, as an entrepreneur, I tend to be very fearful in terms of delegating. But is it possible for me to delegate and still concentrate on more productive work? And also, as I highlighted, uh, when I the main reason I decided to take a, a course in personal development is I wanted to be more impactful. And so my look at 
offering justice was whereby uh, I'm offering legal services totally for free. And I remain uh, uh, under very uh, under very strained resources, whereby you know when you offer services for free, you you will need to incur your cost. But she shared an idea on how I can do both in a very seamless way, whereby I can offer legal services and as well benefit it by being more product productive. And she shared with me a model whereby people who can pay can be able to pay using a particular way. And those who cannot be paid, we can be able to meet in a particular manner whereby they can enjoy legal services. And me on my end, I can be able to be more sustainable. Because the, the long effect of not offering sustainable legal services is that I'll close the law firm and the justice that I want to offer shall not be offered and I'll go home. But if I can be able to find a balance, it can be there. So currently I'm working on that model on how I can be more productive. I'm looking at it. Uh, she gave me ideas on how to set a financial system whereby I can build a law firm as an organization, not as an individual, where by everybody in the team shares the same vision and you can work together. So that was my, my personal experience with the product on productivity on the one-on-one -on -one coaches. And I believe everybody has something on how they can take. That was my take as an advocate. And I believe everybody can take something uh, in their personal life and their personal experience. So that was my experience, uh, RISPA. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Polik. So, you know, as I have mentioned, the Lapid Leaders Africa Crossroads program is designed for professionals that have at least three years of work experience and the goal is to grow with you and work with you and strategize with you what are your next career moves how can we support you in that and one of the ways that the crossroads program supports you in that journey in strategizing and managing your career your business and taking it to the next level is by the one-on-one -on -one executive coaching sessions i know we may not have a lot of time to discuss what um, executive coaching is, but I want to invite you guys to look for an article by the Harvard Business Review. Those are just some of the articles that we covered in our Christmas classes. We were looking at executive coaching. Just look at what is the value of executive coaching for people that have at least two years of work experience. And the Harvard Business Review article found that people that have gone through executive coaching or people that work with a career coach and a personal coach in their lives are two more times, like they're two times more likely to be more successful faster than someone who's trying to figure it all by yourself. So what we are seeing as we look at why is it important that we invest in our personal development today is we are inviting you to get into a program where you will get executive coaching that technically sessions are very expensive, but here you will get it as part of the pack of you joining the Crossroads program. And as we near the conclusion of this discussion, I think my final question to the panelists would be, so you've been here, you've gone through Crossroads, you have, we all have such different experiences because of our needs, who we are, and you know what we are called to do in life, but if you were to speak to someone here to tell them why they should join the Lapid Leaders Africa Crossroads program, what would you tell them? I would like to start with Maria. Um, in a world whereby everybody is caught up in their own life and is focused on rushing i think nairobi streets are a good example of how everybody is in their own world most of the times we <laughs> we tend to figure out our way and the, the 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 truth is that everybody is trying to find their way and sometimes you may go to somebody to help you somebody who who you know who is next to you to help only to realize that they are more confused than you are and then you're back to yourself and you're thinking okay that was not the person I needed help from. <laughs> or you go and take the advice and kumbo unaelekea kwa shimo. So for me, 
and I, 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 I will say this, this is the first time I've ever invested, especially in personal development. Why? Because that example I have given is a good example of me. I, I, I will interact with somebody hoping that they are my way out or they can guide me only to realize that eh, this person has not yet figured it out. Yes, they have some element figured out, but not yet. But this is the space for me, Lapid Crossroads is a place that is intentional on helping people figuring to figure it out. And it's in, out, inside, from the inside outward. And for me, there is no better foundation than that. That foundation for me in Lapid is what spoke to me because you can work on the outside very much, but if you haven't worked on the inside, the, the chances of me going back to the original state are very high. But working from the inside going outwards, I, once I, I, once I start that journey, there is nothing that can take away that journey from me. And I have started it and I am working on it. So for me, if you need that, this is the place to be. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for that, Maria. And to you, Annette, why should someone do Crossroads? Just as Maria has said, everybody is trying to find their way in life, in Nairobi, in Kenya, all over the world. And like you also said, Jispa, people like with the, you can, through the Crossroads program, you're able to identify your why. You're able to know why you do what you do, why you're interested in X, why you're interested in Y, why you're not interested in Y rather. But if you just if you if you don't know your why, you'll do A, B, C, Z, all these other things, and at the end of the day, you'll you you may be frustrated. You may just give up on everything. Then you may just you may you know you may blame the system. Yet you don't know what's driving you. So by joining the Crossroads program, you'll be able to identify your why, and you'll be able to take this take strategic steps to enable you to get to where you need to be and not waste time along the way, yeah. Wow, thank you so much. And finally, we close that discussion. So we're talking about a bit, we've touched on the Lapid Leaders Africa Crossroads Program. These panelists who are the ones, you know, who are our guests for the day are, you know, have been answering a few questions here and there about personal development. What is it? Why should we care about it? Why, how would it benefit you to invest in yourself? What are some of the ways you can invest in yourself? And so we have been talking about the Crossroads program by Lapid Leaders Africa as being part of a program or as being part of the programs that you should consider as a way to invest in yourself, okay? So for Polycap Agree of Pilima, Actually, Polycap Tevuto Mir is the name of your local star we look for you after this. But why should someone do the Lapid Crossroads program from your own experience? Why? Uh, Agui Kilimen Company Advocates is the name. Uh, we are based at has in Vipak Tower. We practice law. I think that's what you're trying to say. But anyway, yeah. uh, why would I encourage somebody to do uh, uh, Crossroads? is maybe just one side using an, 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 an analogy. You could imagine somebody, you have a parcel of land and maybe you have a limited time of 100 days. And then you're told in your lifetime, go make money as much as possible by going out, uh, not necessarily going out. You just find your means of making money. You go spend your 99 days looking for money, going out of that land looking for Maybe on your last day, you say, ah, now since I've not made enough money, let me just build my own grave on this parcel of land. And when you're digging, you discover your land is a minestone of gold and diamond. It's just there. But the unfortunate thing is your 99th day, you are dying tomorrow. So even if you take that money, you cannot do that much with you. Now, with that analogy, imagine yourself, you are that parcel of land. You are using external means to make your life more productive. But if you can dig deeper in yourself, you can be able to utilize those minds that are in you, your skills, your strength, you can improve your weaknesses, 
and you can be able to have a more fulfilling life without straining yourself so much. Because I'm not saying that Lapid will make you live in a comfort zone. I'm not meaning that strain of that, but that strain of not being productive and not being uh, having a satisfaction by utilizing who you are. Therefore, imagine yourself that you are you have potential in yourself. It's just a matter of you mining, bring yourself out. And therefore, you need to do this program so that you can be able to utilize your strength. Imagine if you can uh, uh, you can utilize fully your strength, you capitalize on them. And then you have the opportunity to perfect your weaknesses. And also learning how to work with people so that you can leverage on yourself and also with them. I believe with that, there's no reason why you cannot do uh, crossroad. And on my end, that's what I did a crossroad. I'm very sure the productivity that I'll be able to present in the days to come will be very exceptional. And that's why I encourage everybody to do crossroad so that they can be able to be more productive and you capitalize on the minds that they have in themselves. That is my take on that. Wow. Thank you so much to our panelists and thank you. Thank you so much, Polycarp. And wow, what an analogy. You're out there looking for value outside of yourself, looking for resources outside of yourself. Maybe the whole time you had them, but you were not in a space that could allow you to see it. And that is why when you walk with other people, when you walk with programs like Lapid Leaders, crossroads program that can help you call out the gifts in you and sort of direct and guide you a bit on how to use it, you can save a lot of your time. You can redeem a lot of your own time by investing in yourself in spaces that actually are intentional about investing in you. And I know that there's quite a number of us that could be wondering, okay, so Samimi, I have just joined. I see there's someone by the name administrator saying, hi team, hey administrator, what's your name? Please tell us your name so that we can rename your, um, we can rename your device and get to know who's here with us. But what I'm trying to say about the Crossroads program is, personal investment is a way for us to redeem our time. It's a way for us to go through our own crossroads. You know, I want to explore career change think that perhaps what I studied or the work that I have been doing for the past maybe five years, six years is not what speaks to my heart as a person. Or maybe you have, you've had a good career, but it just doesn't speak to yourself. So instead of being stuck in a space where you feel like you've been shorthanded by life, why not invest in your own personal development in a way that's going to accelerate your growth in a way that's going to enable you to be more competitive, but even above all, beyond being relevant, beyond being competitive, beyond being productive, it's about how will you feel about yourself? Are you leading a career? Are you doing a career that is purposeful enough to fulfill you? And I know that with that comes the question, so funny, what is this crossroads, Bati? Does it have cost? Uh, who started it? What is it? So I'm going to share something very brief with us and then we're going, um, I'm going to share something very brief with us about the Crossroads program that we were yet to share with my colleague Frank. And that is about, um, so we had mentioned that the Crossroads program by Lapid is designed to equip professionals with at least three years of work experience um, with what they need in the different workplaces that they are in to improve the experiences, increase the productivity, as well as their own fulfillment as they work and as they do their work. And then, so why should you sign up for the Crossroads program? I feel that our panelists have done an excellent job for why you should invest yourself by joining the Crossroads program. Maybe some of the other advantages I can share are of the program include that first, it will accelerate your way of being, of becoming a purpose-driven manager and leader in your organization. It will also guide you in profoundly personal um, experiences that are meant to build your self-awareness and your emotional intelligence as a professional. They will also delve into the core of your experience to strengthen your capacities as a great, purposeful, 
authentic human leader and not just a great employee or a business leader. You'll also spend some time reflecting on who you are, what purposeful living would look like for you. And you will also practice how to make your mark and how to envision and become and have even bolder possibilities for yourself. In short, what we are trying to say, it's just as our panelists have said, if you truly want to invest yourself as a, in yourself as a professional, then you should definitely consider joining the Lapid Leaders Africa Crossroads Program. And we have already shared the application link in the chat for those of us that may want to join the class. We will be starting the next Crossroads class in the month of May. So you have still an opportunity to apply because our intake is now open. Who is the lead facilitator of this program? The lead facilitator at the Crossroads program at LAPID is the CEO and founder of LAPID Leaders Africa. That is Esther Moniki. She has a background in accounting. And prior to starting LAPID in 2016, Esther worked with financial giants such as PwC and GT Bank in senior management level. Esther is now an Obama Fellow and the only African woman to have been awarded the Oprah Winfrey Foundation Fellowship for Women in Public Service in 2021-2022. She now holds a master's, an executive master's degree in public service from the University of New York. And she is an expert also in the world of business as she was actually recently a judge in the You've Got Business show that is being conducted by the National Bank of Kenya. So what are you going to learn when you're in the Crossroads program? We will have pillars that cover transform yourself and how you can transform organization. And in transforming yourself, the aim there is to clarify your own career goals, to build an action plan for how to articulate those goals, how to achieve those goals and that plan, as well as working in purpose. And then when you look at um, transform organization, the goal there is to equip you as a professional with the leadership skills and the tools that you need to lead people and organizations more effectively. And I think this probably would be my favorite part. So what are some of the modules you will cover? Of course, you will first you'll have one-on-one. -on -one executive coaching sessions with seasoned executive coaches to help you strategize and plan your career for at least the next five to seven years. You will also cover modules around mindset and change. Like what are some of the thinking tracks that keep us, you know, not advancing as fast as we should or as fast as we can if we give ourselves the opportunity. System thinking, how can you build operational excellence in the way you run your organization, in the way you run your life, in the way you run the businesses that you will start. How do we grow the growth mindset? And how, if we do not have one, or if we need to build our resilience to become you know, growth-oriented people, how do we do it? Those are some of the modules we cover. We cover self-awareness for professionals. We cover strategic career management, we also have a moral imagination and entrepreneurship. That's basically a module that looks at how do we now build businesses that are also focused on impact? Because us is hiring and the world is very different. We are not in the industrial stage. We are not in the, you know, we are not in the colonial eras, but we are also now, we are now not even in a, COVID era. We are not in post-COVID. So how do you build businesses that are more conscious? We are experiencing too much climate change. It's affecting all of us. But so then how do we build businesses as a leader in the spaces where you're in? How can you be morally imaginative? How do we understand organizational dynamics? How do we build our own careers and manage the relationships that we have in the workplace? That's part of what we cover at Crossroads. We do our classes in a span of 12 weeks and they are done both virtually and we have a few in-person sessions as well as some self-learning, self-paced modules. And our classes take place on Saturdays alone from 9 to 4 p.m. Then 
what are the costs? Of course, we would be very amiss if we did not mention what are the costs of this program. For a price of only 49,000, you get to receive all the value that we have shared and so much more as you will get to learn as you participate in the Crossroads program. And I have seen a question recently where people ask us, so you sound like you are a non-governmental or rather like a non-profit organization. Um, like why do you charge your programs? These programs are, this executive program is specifically designed for people who are investing in themselves. And so we feel that this is, this is some of the work that we put in. Um, this is to just help us cover our operational costs, but not even operational costs. It's more for you. The value that you get is way beyond this. You can make this payment in full as the, at the start of the program, or you can make the uh, you can make the payment in up to three installments. And this is all information we provide you as you get into the Crossroads program. But what we are seeing is this will be a worthy investment for you. And with that, I would like to, you know, as you've already seen, you've already heard from our panelists. So the Crossroads program will benefit anyone that gets in that guarantee. So with that, we would like to close the session today. And thank you, every single one of you that is here so, so much for having joined us for this session. And what we are saying is that we would want as many of us as are possible and are able to please apply to join the Lapid Leaders Africa Crossroads Program. We will be starting the next cohort, um, which is the next class. Basically, we are starting the class in May. You can sign up via the, via the link that has been shared by my colleague Frank in the chat, or you can go to our LinkedIn page, or you can also go to our website and you will find the information on how you can apply to the Crossroads Program we would be so glad to host you and serve you and also work with you and partner with you as you invest in your own personal development. Today, our CEO and founder, Esther Moniki, couldn't join us because she's been out of the country for another assignment, but just receive her own regards and just know that she welcomes every single person, every professional that is here. Are you a crossroads? Are you at a place where you know you need to be building your career beyond just maybe what you have done before then, the Crossroads program is for you. With that, I think I would like to hear a comment from at least just one, um, at least two people, and then we are going to move on. Um, rather, we are going to close the night. I see that Nyasudi Eugene had requested, kindly remember to share the recordings. I'm a bit held up and therefore I won't be able to follow the proceedings email uh, right now to nyasudiugene at gmail.com. I believe that my colleague has taken note of your email, Nyasudi, and we will share. Um, we will give you more information about Crossroads there. And then I see Maggie Moki kindly share the presentation uh, with me, Maggie Moki at gmail.com. Um, my colleague Frank has also taken note of that and we will share it with you. We will share um, a brochure that explains that has that same presentation with you. Um, then um, I can see that we were also, yes, we are live on LinkedIn. Yes, we've been live on LinkedIn. So with that, I want to thank every single one of us that has been here. Thank you for investing in yourself. Thank you for choosing Lapid Leaders Africa, where you, um, where we are intentional about you know, investing in the next generation of, you know, African leaders in business, in economics, in governance, in social innovation, and in every single area of your life. And we do that primarily by focusing on leadership development that is focused on the individual because transformed individual can also transform the world. They can transform organizations, families, communities, and eventually the continent. With that, I think I would like to invite my colleague, Frank. I think, yes, Frank, maybe you can be the last person to sort of share a word with us and then close this meeting for us. Thank you, Rispa. Uh, I believe it's been quite an informative session. Uh, in case of any 
queries, you can uh, email us at info at lapidleaders.com. I'll post that in the chat box. Um, I wish you a great evening. Thank you, Frank. Have a great evening to you. Have a great evening, everyone. It's been an honor for us to host you. We look forward to seeing you at the Lapid Crossroads program for executives with over at, with at least three years of work experience. Have a good night.